Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Bleed India with a thousand cuts. The age-old Pakistani military doctrine is still the country's modus operandi and the recent Khalistani protests are an example of the Pakistani deep state hard at work. Pakistan, a country inherently inclined towards the manifestations of radicalism where religious fanatics rule the roost, is attempting to sow unrest and discord in India by activating its agents and stooges in the West. Pakistan's desperate bids to revive the secessionist Khalistan movement in India have, however, gathered no real or noticeable traction, with brave patriotic Punjabis pushing back against any such intentions. Join us as we discuss why Pakistan, a country on the cusp of failure on all fronts, is relentless in its conspiracies and attacks against India and why, despite their best nefarious efforts, is bound to fail again and again. In a tremendous show of solidarity, hundreds of people gathered in different cities around the world chanting pro-India slogans. They also called out Pakistan's insidious plans of exploiting gullible Sikh use under the pretext of Khalistan to further its agenda of labeling India with the tag that Pakistan itself is oft accused of, a state against minorities. These events were organized at the heels of the unrestrained display of hooliganism by paid Khalistani thugs who attacked several Indian missions in different cities of Europe and the United States of America. Whatever you're seeing in media that there's a Khalistan uh, movement going on outside in India, in America, in Canada, this is all hyped up. There's more than a million six who live uh, in North America. And out of that, only 50 show up outside Indian Embassy to protest. And if you combine them, they're not more than 250 people. And this is like jeopardizing the whole Sikh community in India and in outside India, who love India and who support India and who love Punjab. In what appeared to be the well-coordinated execution of a nefarious plan, a trained Khalistani, Amritpal Singh, descended on Indian soil last September, allegedly after his successful indoctrination by Pakistan's inter-services intelligence in the later tenure of his over a decade-long stint in Dubai. The self-styled preacher and leader of Waris Punjab Day, a secessionist group, quickly ascended the infamy ladder thanks to his proclivity for rabble-rousing and his anti-India speeches. He can speak to social media. He's very pleasant on TV or cameras. And uh, this really sells. So you look at his initial popularity, it was all on Clubhouse, right? He was coming on Clubhouse, he was making these points. He was very articulate in Punjabi. He could understand the nuance and the jargon, the sort of new political jargon that uh, decolonialization, you know, a uh, 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 privilege, uh, even woke talk. Uh, he understood that. Currently, Amrapal Singh is at large. Amrapal has been in hiding since Indian agencies launched an operation to arrest him, following his purported role in anti-India activities. Indian agencies have already arrested dozens of his aides, associates, and financiers. This turned out to be a major setback for the ambitions of Khalistani operators, who are based out of Pakistan, as their plans were nipped in the bud their concepts, ideas, and agendas failed to resonate with the masses in Punjab. One must be incredibly ignorant to peddle or believe the narrative that Sikhs have been marginalized in India or have not received what they deserve. On the other side, Sikh valor is as inherent to India as any of the country's other innate characteristics. Sikh's contributions to Indian growth across sectors, especially in India's mighty military, has been exemplary. Sikhon jaisa desh bhakta, 
हो नहीं सकता कोई क्योंकि जहाँ से सिक्खी निकली है हमारे गुरुओं ने गुरु अर्जन देव जी ने गुरु तेग बहादुर जी ने गुरु गोबिंद सिंह जी ने बलिदान दिए सारे परिवार ने शावर कर दिए इस देश में धर्म को बचाने के लिए इस देश की आस्था को बचाने के लिए और जितनी कुर्बानियाँ देश आज़ाद करवाने के लिए हुई हैं उसमें से सबसे ज़्यादा कुर्बानियाँ मोर देन सेवेंटी परसेंट कुर्बानियाँ सिखों ने दी जो फांसियाँ हुई हैं उसमें से सबसे ज़्यादा फांसियाँ सिखों ने दी हैं ये तिरंगे की शान बनाने के लिए सिखों ने सबसे ज़्यादा खून बहाया है और अगर आज कोई इंसान उस तिरंगे का अपमान करता है तो मैं समझता हूँ कि हमारे गुरुओं की शहादतों का अपमान है हमारे जो लोगों ने कुर्बानियाँ दी हैं सेवेंटी परसेंट से ज़्यादा शहादतें फांसी के रस्से चुमे हैं उसका अपमान करता है तो मैं समझता हूँ कि सिख जो हैं वो इस देश का इंटेग्रल पार्ट हैं ये देश हमारा है और हम किसी भी कीमत पे ऐसी चीज़ों को सपोर्ट नहीं कर सकते well, Pakistan's acts are known and manageable. A more worrisome trend that has emerged as of late is the silence of Western countries, despite the proliferation of Khalistani incidents on their soil. Justin Trudeau's own rise within the party has been thanks to Khalistanis, and he has a vested interest in, uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of uh, keeping this entire uh, Khalistan thing on the boil because. Like all, you know, base-level uh, uh, identitarian politicians, which Trudeau is probably the worst kind of, uh, his political survival depends on feeding this. Pakistan, a country where leaders buckle under pressure and give in to the deep state of the army's intimidation, will be well advised to abandon such proxy wars and to focus on their own issues. For India today is completely different from how it was in the 1980s. Pakistan and its ISI cannot make an Indian Sikh lose his or her faith in the country's establishment. Pakistan-backed Khalistani breakaway plans will never resonate with Indian Sikhs and will instead unite the country against their abhorrent neighbor. Moving on. Beijing has grown desperate, especially in the wake of its image taking a beating the world over thanks to its disreputable trade and foreign policies. While on one side it has doubled down on its expansionist agenda, Beijing's modest operandi of spinning a false narrative in order to set the ball rolling for something more diabolical is once again at play. Recently, it tried to portray itself as a victim, citing that its neighbour, India, was being unfair by denying its journalists a visa to work in the country. While like always, Chinese fiction is far from reality. For one, India never denied a visa to anyone who was not working beyond his brief. And two, Beijing staged this entire drama to divert the limelight from its unilateral and desperate decision to rename close to a dozen locations in India's sovereign territory of Arunachal Pradesh. It was rejected by New Delhi and called out by Washington. Have a look at the report. Chinese notoriety was once again at display as Beijing, in an act approximating that of an irresponsible state, changed names of as many as 11 Indian locations in India's sovereign state of Arunachal Pradesh. China, which has been blatantly peddling untruths and propaganda for years, said these sovereign Indian locations were part of a greater Tibet. The statement was devoid of both truth and substance. People in Tibet have never conceded to Chinese claims calling it part of Beijing's jurisdiction. In fact, Tibetans who run their government in exile in the Indian state of Himachal Pradesh have been demanding freedom from the direct clutches of China. Expectedly implying its declaration was imprudent, unilateral and against the very idea of global diplomacy, India rejected Chinese claims. Government of India very closely follows all developments which have a bearing on our national interest and we would take all necessary measures to safeguard them as necessary. The United States, which has time and time again urged Beijing to refrain from its expansionist agenda in the Indo-Pacific, called out its act. What happened next was even more interesting. China accused India of creating visa hassles for their journalists posted in New Delhi 
This was straight out of Chinese diplomatic playbook when it tries to blame other for what it is cent percent accused of. From Covid to Ladakh to its disagreements in South China Sea, China has been following a streak. Uh,一直以来中方保持着克制,秉持善意,同印方积极沟通。the reality, however, is far from Chinese fiction. Indian newspapers reported this week that two Indian journalists posted in Beijing were barred from returning to their jobs in Chinese capital from India. Correspondents for the Hindu newspaper and state broadcaster Prasar Bharti were told last week that their visas have been frozen. So there are Chinese journalists uh, who have valid Indian visas for pursuing journalistic activities in India. So from that perspective, I, we do not see any uh, limitations or difficulties in uh, reporting or doing media coverage. As regards Indian journalists working in China, uh, we would hope uh, that Chinese authorities would facilitate their continued presence and reporting from China. We are in touch with Chinese authorities in this regard. There is nothing new in the discourse. China has been engaged, or should we say, it has manufactured border crises with over a dozen countries. Almost everybody has accused China of resorting to lies and propaganda in furthering its agenda. Relations between the nuclear-armed Asian giants have deteriorated since the mid-2020 when Chinese and Indian troops clashed on their disputed Himalayan frontier, leaving 24 dead. The situation has largely calmed after military and diplomatic talks, but the face-off continues in pockets along the frontier. Moving on. Millet and grain cereals, despite being rich sources of protein and antioxidants with high nutritional value, have never been considered as fashionable or sexy foods. They haven't been highlighted in the menus of the hottest restaurants around the world or dominated foodie discourse. India, the world's largest producer and the world's second largest exporter of millet, is hoping to change the humble millet's reputation worldwide. At a time when the two extremes of malnourishment and obesity plague large portions of the world, India has taken it upon herself to educate the masses about these small seeded grasses that are highly beneficial to human health. Join us as we discuss how millets and grain cereals can contribute to global health in times ahead and what this means for this area of Brand India's agriculture sector. Millets have been a staple of the Indian diet, especially in rural India, for years and remain prevalent even today. They have been a large contributor to Indians' balanced diets. The government of India has identified millets as a safe bet to enhance farmers' income and as a reliable grain to ensure India's nutritional and food security. We are the largest producer and second largest exporter of Sri Anna in the world. We grow several types of Sri Anna, <laughs> such as Sri Anna Jowar, Sri Anna Ragi, Sri Anna Bajra, Sri Anna Kutu, Ramdana, Kangni, Kutni, Kutki, Kodo, China, and Sama. Millets went out of favor and down the order in the common man's kitchen when many food conglomerates, driven by profits and not by the desire to help improve health standards of people, prioritized other grains over millets. India, like many other countries, witnessed a major decline in both production and consumption of millets. Public perception of millets also changed due to the market being increasingly dominated by wheat. However, now realizing the nutritious value and climatic reliance of millet production, 
the Indian government took it upon itself to revive the practice of adding millets to the country's food basket once again. The government of India, to encourage millets cultivation and consumption, declared 2018 as the National Year of Millets. The government also began referring to millets as nutri-cereals, giving them an image makeover. It is because of such efforts that India exported 64 million USD of millets in 2021. It was a remarkable achievement considering India had not even touched the export mark of 30 million USD worth of millets in 2019 and 2020. India, which is home to 20% of the global millet production, with a staggering 80% contribution in Asia's millets production, also proposed that the United Nations declare an International Year of Millets. Cognizant of India's success in feeding her vast population, an MO of Working for Global Welfare, the global body declared 2023 as the International Year of Millets. Millets are one of the easiest accessible uh, uh, so, like health supply that I have and uh, it helps me manage my weight, it helps me with my cardiovascular uh, maintenance. The primary aim of the International Year of Millets is to raise awareness about millets' nutritional value and promote understanding of how millets can prove instrumental in eradicating food inequality and deficiency. Recently, New Delhi hosted the Global Millets Conference, wherein as many as 100 Indian millet exhibitors and around 100 international buyers from countries around the world participated. The event was aimed at further promoting and developing the global millet market. Bharat ka millet mission Sri Anna ke liye shuru wai abhyan देश के ढाई करोड़ किसानों के लिए वरदान साबित होने जा रहा है प्रोसेस और पैकेज फूड आइटम्स के जरिए मिलेट्स अब स्टोर्स और मार्केट तक पहुंच रहा है पिछले कुछ वर्षों में ही देश में श्री अन्न पर काम करने वाले 500 से ज्यादा स्टार्टर्स भी बने हैं बड़ी संख्या में एपीओज इस दिशा में आगे आ रहे हैं। According to the International Crop Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, more than 90 million people depend on millets in their diet. While this is already a vast number of people, proponents of millet production are of the opinion that a greater number of people should include millets in their diet. Millets are versatile grains that grow in half the time as wheat and use 70% less water than rice, providing a multifold benefit. A concentrated campaign to enhance the production and consumption of millets, which are rich in carbs, proteins and vitamins, can change the entire paradigm of the food and health industry globally. Several experts have weighed in saying that a sincere effort towards millet production can help countries overcome micronutrient deficiencies effectively. India, already a self-sufficient country when it comes to ensuring food for her people, is on a mission to capitalize on her millet market and deliver her people the benefits that go beyond just one aspect of human welfare. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Saudi Arabia and other OPEC plus oil producers last week announced voluntary cuts to their production, with Riyadh saying it would cut output by 500,000 barrels per day or BPD from May until end of 2023. Russia's Deputy Prime Minister also said Moscow would extend a voluntary cut of 500,000 barrels per day until the end of 2023. The United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Iraq, Oman and Algeria said they would voluntary cut output over the same time period. 
the UAE said it would cut production by 144,000 BPD. Kuwait announced a cut of 128,000 BPD, while Iraq said it would cut output by 211,000 BPD and Oman announced a cut of 40,000 BPD. Algeria said it would cut its output by 48,000 BPD. The Saudi Energy Ministry said in a statement that the kingdom's voluntary cut was a precautionary measure aimed at supporting the stability of the oil market. A funeral was held last week for two Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps members who died after an Israeli airstrike in Syria on March 31st. Megdad Mehgani Jafar Abadi and Milad Haidari were killed near Damascus in the sixth attack by Israel in Syria in March, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. The Israeli military declined to comment on claims it was involved. IRGC Commander-in-Chief General Hussein Salami said the deaths would be avenged, a sentiment echoed by other mourners. Israel has for years carried out attacks against what it has described as Iran-linked targets in Syria, where Tehran's influence has grown since it began supporting President Bashar al-Assad in the civil war that began in 2011. Iran says its officers serve in an advisory role in Syria at the invitation of Damascus. Dozens of Revolutionary Guards members, including senior officers, have been killed in Syria during the war. Moving on. As the holy month of Ramadan treads forward, devout Muslims across the world have dived into a devotional fervor. Muslims follow a strict routine and refrain from worldly pleasures during the month of Ramadan, which is believed to be the month of spiritual reflection and growth. The unique socio-cultural landscape of India gives a unique identity to the Ramadan. Have a look. A strict observation of fasting during the month of Ramadan comprises getting up before the break of the dawn, preparing a meal called sehri and consuming it before sunrise. After the sunset, friend and family are seen gathering together and breaking their fast with iftari, a meal that starts with dates and water, followed by dinner. In mosques all around India, tens of thousands of devout Muslims perform the namaz a five-fold prayer. The market is inundated with dates of all varieties that appear delectable. Due to their special significance in Muslim ceremonies, people are purchasing dates in big quantities. Ramzan is a month for the Muslim community. جس میں تمام برکتیں کا برکتوں کا نزول ہوتا ہے اور جنت کی راہیں کھل جاتی ہے اور گناہوں کا کفارہ ہو جاتا ہے شیطان بند کیے جاتے ہیں In Ramadan, Muslims are encouraged to share whatever they have acquired and distribute it to those who are less fortunate. Many groups are working to provide food to the fasting people. They cook delicious food, pack it and deliver it to the needy people. One such group is working in India's Srinagar. It is serving free food to people who are fasting in this month. It is believed that Ramadan is an honourable and blessed month and in it the reward of generosity is multiplied. हम यहाँ पे अभी फ्री रमजान मुबारक है इसलिए हम यहाँ पे फ्री डिस्ट्रीब्यूट मील कर रहे हैं हम शहरी के टाइम भी इफ्तारी के टाइम भी जब भी किसी मुसलमान को कोई भी जरूरत होती है या शहरी के टाइम पे या सपोज इफ्तारी के टाइम पे हम उसको प्रोवाइड करते हैं फूड थ्रू दीज विजुअल्स यू कैन सी शॉप सेलिंग डिलिशियस राइस वर्मिसली ऑफ डिफरेंट कलर एंड टेक्स्चर्स दिस वर्मिसली आई यूज टू प्रिपेयर स्पेशल मिल्क डिशेज ऑन ईद अल फितर Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and it is believed that the Holy Quran was revealed in this month. It is considered a month of good fortune, charity and worship. Eid al-Fitr is likely to be celebrated on 21st April subject to the sighting of the moon. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.